Hello, welcome uh, to Creation Science Evangelism Magic Tricks video. My name is Dr. Kent Hovind. I was a high school science teacher for 15 years, and now for the last 10 years I've been an evangelist, and I travel and speak on creation and evolution. But for 17 years, as a brand new Christian, I was a director of a children's ministry at our church. We had a junior church, and I taught there. I drove a bus for 17 years. And for many, many years, as I worked with boys and girls, I tried to use magic tricks or illusion. Some people object to the term magic tricks, I understand, but uh, we, I don't know of a better name to call it. I used illusions to try to get kids' attention. What I want to do today is share with you, and my son will be sharing with you, some of the thousands of tricks that are available to help get kids' attention. We have several purposes for this uh, video. We want to teach you how to get kids' attention and how to keep their attention in order to teach them spiritual lessons. You can use things around the house. You can use a ball, a string, a rope, spoons, forks, all sorts of things. When kids know how to do different magic tricks, it builds their confidence. And I find that by teaching young boys and girls how to do different things, and not only show them, use it to get their attention and teach them a lesson, and then at the same time, teach them how it's done. And they'll say, oh, wow, and then they go home with that renewed confidence of, hey, I know how to do that, and you don't. And some kids really need that uh, confidence-building activity. We use uh, Uno cards for all sorts of things. We'll be talking about that. We also do these magic tricks to show kids how easy it is to get fooled. It is very easy to get tricked. And we use that to illustrate how easy it is for the devil to trick us. And Satan is a master at tricking boys and girls into not doing what God wants them to do. And we don't want that. The Bible says, be careful, be not deceived, God is not mocked. It's real easy to get deceived, and the Bible uses that phrase quite a bit. So we're going to show you how to do a variety of things here. And what I try to do when I taught junior church, I would do a variety of tricks with common items, and I would only show them how to do one every week, or just do one trick a week or so, and tell them, hey, come back next week and we'll show you another one. The kids knew that every week there was going to be something new, and that tends to make them want to come back every week and bring their friends. So... We'll get into some of the magic tricks here in just a second. People say, where do you do these? Or why do you do this stuff? Well, I do it every chance I get. I go out to eat almost every week with some pastor as I travel and preach. I may be in a different city, and I'll have some kids gather around the table, and I'll get my spoons or the forks or the glasses off the table. And I'm going to show you how to do so many different things today that you'll be able to do magic tricks and get kids' attention anywhere you go with a variety of things that you have right there on hand, coins in your pocket, uh, things that you can use to get uh, their attention and make the kids love you. I am very concerned. I think that a lot of uh, pastors and uh, adults as I travel around the country, they spend all their time talking to other adults and each other. If you read the Bible, I think you'll find Jesus spent an awful lot of time talking to children. The kids love to be around him. And I think if a person is in love with Jesus Christ and stays close to God, the kids will flock around them. And that's the purpose. Plus, if things get bad in this country and persecution comes, it's the kids that are going to suffer. And we want them to have the uh, knowledge that, hey, there's somebody out there that loves me. I spend all my free time, I guess, trying to uh, love the kids, trying to be their friend. So, in just a moment, we'll come back and show you a few uh, magic tricks that you can do with all sorts of things right around your house. Well, let's show you my first trick. I often take with me ropes as I travel and speak, keep a few in the suitcase, a variety of different ropes. There's all sorts of tricks you can do with just common, ordinary, quarter-inch nylon rope you can buy at the hardware store. And I have my wonderful assistant here, Stephanie Schultz. Thank you for joining us, Stephanie. So you're just about eight years old, huh? Almost eight. Great. Her dad's been working for me for quite some time. He travels and speaks on creation also. Stephanie, I have a ma magic rope. I'm going to try to pull this rope through my neck. If I put the left side over the right side and pull real hard... Oh, wait a minute. Come on. You should be able to pull it. Right through your neck. Oh. Boy, how would you like to learn how to do that one, boys and girls? Well, let me show you how it's done. If you take a piece of rope about five or six feet long, I just burn the ends and pull a little black tape. Actually, I tape it with black tape and then cut it, just electrician's tape, and then burn the end so it doesn't come unraveled with the nylon rope. That's what the black stuff is on the end. If you put the rope around your neck like this and pull real hard, you will kill yourself. And you don't want to kill yourself, so what you have to do is trick folks. We're going to put the rope from the middle, find the middle here, and tuck it in under my shirt. And it's going to look like it's around my neck. Let me get it tucked under my shirt. It's easier if you have a tie on. Then when you tell the boys and girls you're going to pull it through your neck, 
you shrug your shoulders and make it make your face turn red. But really, you're just pulling it out from under your shirt. And that's how people get tricked. That's a simple one anybody can do, and the kids always love that one. We'll show you another one in just a moment. Well, Stephanie, one of the devil's favorite things to do to boys and girls is to get them trapped with bad habits. I've got my magic rope here, and I'm going to show how easy it is for the devil to get people trapped with bad habits. Sometimes people get in the habit of lying. You know, somebody asks them a question and they don't tell the truth. The first time you lie, it kind of bothers you, you know, but after a while, the more you lie, pretty soon you get good at it. Some people are good liars. They get trapped with the habit of lying. With some people, it's saying bad words. First time they say bad words, it kind of bothers them, you know, and something in their heart hurts, but after a while, they get good at it, and then they can tell lies as good as anybody, and they become good liars. Maybe it's saying bad words. Some people curse and swear and say all sorts of bad words. And you get all these bad habits, and the devil just keeps getting us trapped with all these bad habits, and we just can't get out. Maybe it's disobeying your parents, you know, sassing back to mom and dad. Some people do that. And you get all these bad habits, and you say, oh, Jesus, my life is all tied up. I got so many bad habits. Would you please get me out of this mess? And if you ask the Lord to help you, he'll get you out of all those bad habits just like that. Would you like to learn how to do that trick? All right, now I'll pay close attention. I put the rope over my thumb. I put most of the rope on the outside of my hand, a little more than half. I reach under the side toward me, grab this, pull it in, twist it around, and put it over my finger. Okay? Now I reach under here, under here and through this finger. Pull it back, loop it around, and put it over my finger. I reach under the next one. Pull it through, twist it around, and put it over the finger. Reach under the last one, pull it through, loop it around, and put it over the finger. Now when I pull to undo it, I'll let you pull real slow on this rope, but watch carefully. I'm going to let it fall off of my thumb. Ooh. Now you start pulling real slow and watch what happens. You can even have somebody hold the end of your fingers. Wow. But it unzips right off of there. That's a neat trick, isn't it? Sometimes we think the devil has us trapped with a habit that we can't quit, but hey, God can get us out of anything. So if you have some bad habits in your life and you want God to help you get out of it, you say, God, would you please help me get out of these habits? And he can do it. All right, let me show you another trick with the long rope that I use. It's about five feet long. I want to make this rope pull right through the tiniest hole you have ever seen. I'm going to push this, this end of the rope right through that hole. Do you believe I can make it through that hole? That's no problem, right? Let's make the hole a little smaller. I'm going to push it through that hole so fast, you will not even see. I am so fast, you're not going to believe it. I'm going to go right through that hole. Ready? Wow. I think we can do it even smaller than that. Oh, man. Okay, we're going to pull it right through this hole. Let's make it real. You tell me when to stop. Yeah. You think I can make it through that? <laughs> sure. I'm pretty fast. Let's see here. You ready? Set. Go. Uh -huh. Right through the hole. Would you like to see how to do that trick? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Watch this carefully now. I put about 16 inches of rope on the inside of my thumb hanging down like this. A little smaller rope works even better, but this will work fine. <clears throat> you wrap around your thumb a few times, make a loop, and twist it around backwards. Now it's this rope that was inside the first one, not the one I just put up there. The first rope is the one I'm going to use to pull through the hole. I'm going to pull this rope over a little bit toward the end of my thumb out here. And you'll see why in a minute. Now I can make with this other rope, pull down on there and make the hole smaller. Go ahead and pull down on this one just a little, make the hole smaller. Okay, that's good. Now watch what happens. When I take this rope, I just go right past, I don't even go through the hole, and I pull and it lifts up underneath my thumb. 
it actually just pulled out between my thumb and my finger and ended up inside the loop. And you thought it went right through the loop, didn't you? That's easy to get tricked, isn't it? Boy, the devil is good at tricking us. I'll tell you what, hold your thumb up. I'm going to see if I can pull this rope right through your thumb. You ever had a rope go all the way through your thumb before? We will today. To make sure the rope doesn't come around, I'm going to take this end and tie it in a knot. And I want you to notice, Stephanie, my fingers will never leave my hand at any time during this trick. Mm -hmm. But your thumb might. <clears throat> mm -hmm. If I put my finger on top, there's no way to get this off of there, is there? No. Well, let's see if we can get this off of here. Oh, keep it on there, because I happen to know the magic way to get ropes off of thumbs. You ready? <gasps> Would you like to see how to do that trick? <laughs> <laughs> All right, put your thumb up. Or you can do it around a lamp post or anything, any kind of post. I take my middle finger and reach over and pull the first rope back. Then I take my mid index finger and I grab the rope on the left side and put up through here. Oh, keep it on there. Now <clears throat> I'm going to tip over and put my middle finger on top of your thumb. Now you think the rope's around your thumb, <clears throat> but if I lift my finger out, it was already untied before I put my finger on there. I actually, the way you twist, put your fingers on there will untie it, take it off the thumb, and they don't even know it's off the thumb. Boy, it sure is easy to get tricked, isn't it? Okay, let me show you some ropes, tricks you can do with some short ropes. I want you to notice again, my fingers will never leave my hand at any time during this trick. I have a long rope and a medium rope and a short rope. The long one is longer than the short one, right? Take one of these ropes and pull on it real hard. I want to see if you can stretch it. Make that rope stretch. Just try it. Pull. Come on. Harder. Nope. Won't stretch, will it? Okay. Try the rest of them. Make sure they're not fake. Ordinary ropes I bought next door at the hardware store. Nope. That won't stretch either, will it? Okay. Try that one. Make sure there's nothing tricky going on here. Got it? Okay. Now, there are three kinds of people in this world. Some people have a very short list of sins. They don't do very much wrong. They're pretty good people. You know, they don't do very much wrong at all. Other people have, they're a little more average, you know. Oh, my tape is coming off the end here. We'll throw that away. Just burn the end is all. Other people have medium lists. They do things bad a little more often than the rest of us. And then there are some people that have a long list of things they've done wrong. Some really bad people in this world. So we have the long one, the medium one, and the short one. Now what I'd like to do is take these ropes and make them all the same size. Because we look at people and say, well, I'm better than that person. But God doesn't look at it that way. God thinks we're all the same. So I'm going to put the long one up there, the medium one up there, and the short one up here. And I want you to blow on these ropes and see if you can make them all the same size. Let's get them all even here. Okay. Blow on those, make them all the same size. Just blow. Okay, now watch this. All the same size. One, two, three, all the same size. See, God looks at us and says, hey, you might think you're better than somebody else, but I think you're all sinners and you all equally deserve to go to hell. That's why we all need to get saved. Even if you're good or bad, doesn't matter. You still need to have Jesus Christ forgive your sins. Would you like to see how to do this trick? If you put them all back now, <clears throat> get them all the same size, and we blow on it one more time here. Let's see. Oh, that one's too tall. Two. There we go. Blow on it one more time. See if you can fix it back. Go ahead. There you go. All right. Let's see if you got it now. We have... There's the long one. Ooh, there's the medium one. And there's the short one. You fixed them. You want to learn how to do that one, don't you? Okay. My ropes are cut in increments of three. This is 10 inches, 20 inches, and 30 inches. Or you can do it one foot, two foot, three foot. It doesn't matter. I put the little one in first, closest to my arm, then the medium one, and then the long one. I put the long one up on the outside toward my fingertips. Get them up there a little closer. Then I'll turn around, you can see this. Then I put the medium one up on the outside toward my fingertips. 
Now here's the trick. When I grab the short one, you have to reach through the long one to grab the short one. And you bring it up and you put it back in position number three. One, two, three. So I'm going to put it right there, position number three, move my thumb. Now I have short one, medium one, short one, long one, medium one, long one. So when I grab these three and pull down, actually, it was looped over. But I kept that part covered. So it had the medium one, and I've got both ends of the short one in this hand, but I didn't let you see that. I kept that covered. And then I knew the middle one was the medium size one, so I grabbed that one and said, Stephanie, I have one. Then I switched. I put it back, grabbed both of these, kept it covered, two, three, and opened my hand like, wow, but actually this is the trick over here. See how easy it is to get fooled? But God looks at us and says, hey, you might think you're pretty good and he's pretty bad, but hey, you're all bad and you all need to be forgiven. You need to be saved. So, we'll show you another trick in just a moment. Well, Stephanie, I'd like to show you now the devil's handcuffs. I have this rope and I want you to notice when I do this trick, again, my fingers will never leave my hand at any time. If you take this ordinary rope, which you can buy at the hardware store, and you bang it together just right, you bang it together, you can make the devil's handcuffs. Okay, put your hands in here. Now, if you pull it like this, wrap it around, you just let me tie you up, didn't you? You know what we do? A lot of boys and girls, they just let the devil <clears throat> tie them up. They get bad habits, and they start off when they're seven years old or eight years old, you know, doing bad things, and they just stick their hands right in the devil's handcuffs and say, here, why don't you make me your slave, devil? Well, that'd be kind of dumb to let the devil be your boss, wouldn't it? Okay, pull your hands apart a little bit, and I'll show you how to do this trick. I use these devil's handcuffs on kids all the time, especially if you have a kid who's a little bit rowdy in Sunday school class. I say, watch this, kid. Come here, you know, whack and make the devil's handcuffs, and tie them up and tie them to a pole someplace. I say, no, I don't do that, actually, but you feel like it sometimes. What I did, now this trick is fairly easy. It takes a little practice. I twisted my right hand toward me and my left hand away from me. So when I brought the ropes together, I was able to reach through, grab the opposite side with both hands. So I brought it in, grabbed the opposite rope, and pulled. And with a little practice, you can get where you're really fast at it. I just go like this. Let's try it real fast. You ready? So we're going to try the devil's handcuffs. Just takes a little practice, and anybody can do that one. That's a good one, isn't it? Okay, let's show you some tricks with some other items besides ropes. There's lots of things you can do with tricks for kids, and I really enjoy magic tricks. Are you liking this? Good. All right, we'll show you some more in just a minute. Well, Miss Stephanie, I would like to show you some tricks that I do when I go out to eat with people. Most of the times when you go out to eat, they will have a couple of spoons and a couple of forks and a glass, right? I want you to watch this trick. You take two forks like this, you put them together, push them together, so they stick. Take a toothpick, put it in the forks like this. Now, I want you to hold your finger out upside down like this. And let's put this right here. Oh, oh, almost, almost. Let's try it here, folks. I want you to see if you can tell me how this works. Okay, hold your finger up there, a little higher. Now turn it real slowly around over that way and back over my way. Why don't the forks fall off, Stephanie? That's pretty neat, isn't it? You can even balance it on the side of a cup. We'll take the forks on the toothpick, if I can get it to go here, 
and balance it right on this cup. Shove the toothpick in and balance it. Oh, the cup is not quite heavy enough. I'll hold the cup to support the weight of it and it should balance right there. Wow. That's pretty neat. They just stay right there, hanging on the side of that cup. You think, how on earth can that happen? Well, actually, if you're balancing on a toothpick like this, the weight of the fork has to balance on your finger, so half of the fork is behind my finger from these handles sticking out. So this is actually a very simple balancing trick. The forks are jammed together, and the toothpick stuck right through any of the... I put someplace in the middle, so it has to go through both forks. Pretty neat one, huh? I have two ordinary spoons and a ordinary glass, actually a plastic. What do you call a glass when it's not made out of glass? Anyway, whatever it is, we have one here. And I'm going to hit the end of the spoon like this, ah! right into the cup. All you need to do for this one is get the base of your spoon against the middle of the glass. Make sure it is all straight. Line this one up. If everything is in a straight line, and this is just barely touching this spoon, when you push here, it's going to lift up on that spoon, right? And if you do it quick enough, it'll flip this spoon right up into the glass. That'd be one you could practice at home, right? There you go. Okay, let's try a few more tricks. Well, today, Miss Stephanie, we are going to show you how to make a ticket to heaven. Once upon a time, there were two boys that rode the bus to Sunday school, George and Sam. Well, the Sunday school teacher took a piece of paper like this. He told the boys and girls how to go to heaven in Sunday school. He said, now, boys and girls, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart so you can be saved and go to heaven. You have to have your sins forgiven. And George said, well, I want to do that. So George prayed and asked Jesus to forgive his sins, and he became a Christian. He became a child of God. So the teacher took a piece of paper, folded it like this, folded it down like this, and said, Now, George, this is to remind you that you have asked Jesus into your heart. This is going to be your ticket to heaven because you've got Jesus in your heart. So George took the piece of paper, and he stuck it in his pocket, and he got back on the bus to go back home from Sunday school. And another one of the kids on the bus, the Sam kid who was in the class, Sam did not want Jesus to come into his heart. He did not want to get saved. So Sam came over and he said, George, I see you got the ticket to heaven. He said, I never got one today because I didn't, I didn't ask to get saved. He said, George, would you, would you let me have part of your ticket? And George said, well, I suppose I'd give you part of my ticket, but really, Sam, you need to get saved. He said, no, I don't want to get saved. So George took his ticket and he cut off one third of the ticket. He said, I'll just give you part of my ticket, George. Or so he gave it to Sam. Sam got to looking at this, and he said, you know, all I got's a bunch of pieces of paper. He said, that's probably not enough to get me to heaven. I've been pretty bad. I've done some bad things. He went back over. He said, George, could I have some more, please? And George said, Sam, listen, I'll be glad to give you some more, but really, you need to get saved. He said, no, I don't want to get saved. I just want part of your ticket. He said, okay, well, I'll give you part of my ticket. So he cut what he had left in half, gave it to Sam, stuck it back in his pocket. Well, Sam thought, you know, this ought to be enough to get me to heaven. Now, I don't even have to get saved. I'll just take this ticket. And sure enough, one day, Sam died. And he went up to heaven, and he stand in front of the gate and said, hey, let me into heaven. I got a ticket right here. And St. Peter came to the gate and said, uh, Sam, you don't have a ticket to heaven. He said, yes, I do, right here. This is my ticket to heaven. Look. Peter said, Sam, let me explain something to you. You never asked Jesus to save you. You got a ticket, all right, but you don't have a ticket to heaven. Nobody gets in here with a ticket. What you really have, you got tricked. He said, Sam, you have a ticket to where? Hell. He's got a ticket to hell because he never asked Jesus to save him, never did get saved. And then... George died. He came up, knocked on the gate, said, hey, Peter, let me in. I got a ticket. Peter said, you don't get in with a ticket. You got to have Jesus in your heart. And George said, I know. 
I'm really trusting in what Jesus did for me on the cross. And that's how you go to heaven. Would you like to learn how to do that trick? All right, we'll show you how it's done. Take a regular piece of paper like this. If we fold it in half the long way, the only tricky part of this is you have to know how far to fold it over. So what I did is I folded in one corner and made this mark right there. Now right here is where I want to fold it over to. I'll fold it over that far right there. Now when I fold these two corners in, sort of like you're making an airplane, it's going to make everything I need to make the ticket to heaven. Fold the two corners in, fold it in half. Now if you cut right off about a third of it, get that scissors open there and I'll help you cut that off. Open that up, straight up right there, perfect. Okay, hard, just because you're cutting through a bunch, okay. That's the first part. Now cut it in half again, right down the middle. And when we cut it in half this way, okay, now see if you can make the letters hell from that, right there. Unfold all the little pieces. I'll help you, help you out a little bit. Fold all the pieces flat. And you have, that's part of the E. Let's get the kinks out of there first. Bend it backwards. There's part of the E. Here's another part of the E. All right, like that. And here's the middle part. And here is the letter H. Now, what's this open up to when you open that up? There, show that to Brian right there. That opens up to be the cross, what Jesus did on the cross. There we go. Well, Miss Stephanie, now I'm going to show you how to cut an apple. Oh, that's not an apple. What is that? A banana. A banana. We're going to cut the apple, the, uh, the banana, with the laser. You've seen my laser before. You push this little button and that red spot comes out. Well, there's a line coming out of there called a laser. It goes all the way up. With this laser, I can cut right through the banana without cutting the skin. You want to watch me cut it? Ready? Did you see it cut the banana? I see a box Yeah, there's an old banana here. Let's see if it cut the banana. We will take this, peel the top back. Are you ready? Yes. We will peel the banana back, the peeling. And look at that. It cut the banana right in four pieces, burned it right in half. There's one. There's one. And there's one. We cut the banana. Oh, there's another cut. Man, we really cut that banana to pieces, didn't we? Burned it right in half. How would you like to learn how to do that trick? Whoa. All right. Well, if you'd like to cut the banana with a laser or with a flashlight or with an imaginary laser, I can actually cut it with my finger, just pointing at it, if you know how to do the magic trick. What I did, you take a needle and you poke it into the banana right on top of one of these bumps. On the, the bananas have these ridges on them, these little bumps. I'm going to poke the needle right through that bump, and I'm going to swing the needle back and forth. So the needle is cutting the banana inside. Now the banana is already cut right through there where that little hole was where I poked the needle. Push the needle in and swing it back and forth, but I didn't cut the skin. Then I pretend like I'm going to cut it with my laser or with my finger. I can go whoosh and say, see, we just cut the banana. And the kids all think, no, he didn't cut the banana. I cut it earlier. I'll just cut the top off this banana and see. If we peel it back, we will find the banana has already been cut inside. And you can tell them it was cut with your finger, but really you cut it with the needle. How do you like that trick? That's one you could do at home and your brothers would love it, wouldn't they?
Well, Miss Stephanie, I would like to show you my magic quarter. Take a look at that quarter. See if you see anything unusual about it. Would you say that's an ordinary quarter? Yes. Okay, put it on my hand with the head side up. Now, what side is this? The head. This is head. Can you flip it over? What side is this? The head. The head. <laughs> flip it over. What side is this? The head. The head. I thought you said there was tails on the other side. This is heads and this is, oh, wait a minute. This is heads and this is heads, right? Now hold your hand out like that. This is heads and this is heads. Now you try it. Flip. Tails, you broke it. No, no, now watch carefully here. This is heads and this is heads and this is heads. Now if you have two quarters, we have one is heads, this one is heads, and this one is heads, right? When I flip them over, one is heads and one is tails. <laughs> heads and tails. Cool. Would you like to learn how to do that trick? All right, pay attention. You take an ordinary quarter. I put it on my hand closest to my little finger. If I put it over in the middle, see, when I turn my hand over, my hand is going to roll right over the top of the quarter. I put this hand down lower, and I pull this hand so fast, it slaps it straight down, and it never, the quarter never does turn. So this is on heads on this side by my little finger. If I put this one on the other side, it's got the red letters on there, this one will flip over. See those red letters on there? Yeah. That's just somebody got some paint on this quarter, it doesn't matter. Now this one will flip over and this one won't, because I'm going to twist my hand in the middle. And I've got to have my other hand down below, so when I twist it in the middle, this one did not flip, and the one with the red letters did flip. It takes a little practice, and you can learn how to do the two-headed quarter. If you want them both to stay heads, I put them both on the side by my little finger. Now they're both heads, both heads, both tails, and one of each. Kids are amazed by that one. Stephanie, how many pennies are here on this table? Six pennies. There are four pennies in this row and three pennies in this row. I would like you to make four pennies in both rows at the same time without adding any more pennies. Hmm, how can we put four pennies in both rows? There's four here and three here. Or I can move this one and have four and three. Hmm, I would like to have four and four. You know, sometimes in life, it's just hard for us to figure out how God is going to supply our needs. We say, God, I don't have enough money to go around. And oftentimes, we're not thinking of all the different ways God can do things. Watch this. I'm going to take this penny right here and put it on top. How many pennies in this row? Two. No, there's two here. Three, four. Oh. And four in this row. We made four in both rows. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, you're going to have to show me some different way to fix this problem because we don't have enough money to go around. <laughs> Let me show you one more trick with pennies. Okay, here I have, uh, we're going to get a bunch of pennies. Heads, tails, heads. Oop. Tails, heads, tails. And heads, tails, heads. And tails, heads, Tails. Now these pennies are all mixed up. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. What I'm supposed to do here, I'm only going to touch one penny. Just one penny. But I'm going to fix every one of these rows where it's either all heads or all tails. We can fix all of the rows only touching one penny. A lot of times we get ourselves locked into a way of looking at things. And that's the way we've always done it. Sometimes you need to say, maybe there's a whole new way to do things. Watch this. I'm going to touch one penny right here. I'm only touching one penny, and I fixed all the rows. All heads, all tails, all heads, all tails. One. Only touching one. See? That's pretty neat. <laughs> I'm about to show you the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. Would you like to learn how to shoot a rubber band? The scientific way? We're going to see how far we can shoot this rubber band. Now, here's what most kids don't know. See, they don't study science enough. They don't know how to shoot a rubber band the real way. If you take a rubber band and put it on the tip of your finger and pull it back and shoot it, it'll fly pretty far. But if you want it to fly twice as far, 
you have to learn the scientific secret to shooting rubber bands. And I do this everywhere when I go to churches. I say, boys and girls, I'm going to show you the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. I will take one side of the rubber band and I will write on here, this is the flesh. And on the other side, I'm going to write the spirit. See, the Bible says we're supposed to walk in the spirit. We're not supposed to be led by the flesh. We're supposed to let the spirit lead us, the spirit of God. So one side is the flesh and one side is the spirit. If you put both sides stretched the same, when it flies through the air, they'll be flopping back and forth and they're fighting against each other all the time. And so you lose all your speed. It won't go very far. But the secret to going fast is, before I stretch it back, I grab most of it on this side. Now this is tight, listen to it. And this is loose. Now when it flies through the air, three times farther than most people can shoot a rubber band. That's how you shoot a rubber band the high speed scientific way, all right? For our next magic trick, Stephanie, we are going to actually create some thick water. For this magic trick, all you need is a cup that can hold thick water, a thick water cup, a normal 3x5 card, and a thick water maker. This pitcher is indeed a thick water maker. All you have to do to make the thick water in here is pump the pitcher five times. Go ahead and uh, just pump it up and down five, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Now, if the, pitch, if the thick water maker worked, we should have indeed made some thick water. Let's try and see if it worked. We'll put it in our thick water holder, our glass here. Pour it in the glass. So we put our three by five over it so we don't contaminate the thick water. As we do that, we will then turn it over, and the thick water should stay in the glass without even falling out. Simply amazing, you say? No. It's thick water. It's thick water. Definitely thick water. Now, this trick is definitely a very simple one that's easy, easy to do. Uh, I just need a 3 by 5 card, a cup, and some water in a pitcher, and come up with any kind of storyline you'd like to come up with. Uh, for this one, simply the, the suction of the air is what causes the water to stay in, just simply putting the 3 by 5 card over the glass, turning it upside down, it will actually hold in there, and pretty solid too. But of course, if you hit it too hard, yeah, you can hold that. If you wiggle it too hard, it will come out. Mm. Very simple trick that will definitely amuse simple minds. Stephanie, for our next trick, we showed you the thick water. We'd like to show you some thick air. You can actually buy thick air and have it in a cup. Now, thick air is very different from normal air. See, thick air goes up. You have to have something upside down in order to hold it. Inside this, I have some thick air. There is some thick air inside of here. I'm going to drink this thick air and then blow it inside the balloon. Remember, you've got to keep the thick air up, so I've got to blow up in it. And the thick air, it should cause the balloon not to deflate. Let's try it. I'm going to drink this thick air. And it should stay in there, just like that. Didn't even have to tie the balloon or anything. The, the thickness of the air caused it to stay inside of the balloon. However, thick air, it's not all that good because if you add regular air to thick air, it totally destroys it. You can add regular air and the thick air will all go out. <laughs> now, this is a very simple trick, Stephanie. Would you like to learn how to do this trick? Are you sure? Okay, I'm going to show you how simple this trick is. What you need is a regular balloon. You can use a glass for thick air, which actually has regular air in it. But we're going to call it thick air. And what you need inside the balloon beforehand is a marble. Oh. There was a marble inside the balloon, but you didn't know about that, did you? <laughs> so you put the marble inside the balloon. Then when you blow it up, you blow it up. Uphill, of course, because thick air has to go up. And the marble is actually stuck right there 
inside the balloon. So if we were to make the marble go out, now the marble's rolling around in there, and the balloon is able to deflate. That's how simple it is. You know, magic tricks can be very deceiving. There's a lot of card tricks that can be deceiving. You'll notice we are using the optional Uno card for these tricks. In my cards, in my hand, Stephanie, I hold two cards. I have a green one right here, and on the other side, I have a yellow seven. Two cards, right? Yellow seven right there, and on the other side, the other side, I got the green one, okay? Now, I'm going to put one of these cards behind my back, all right? I'm going to put one of them behind my back. Now, which card did I just put behind my back? No, no, you weren't watching. See, I put the yellow seven behind my back. You got to watch carefully, okay? Let's try this again. Two cards, the yellow seven and the green one, okay? Green one, yellow seven. Now, I'm going to put one of these cards behind my back. Tell me, which card did I put behind my back? The yellow seven. No, I'm telling you, Stephanie, you got to watch because I put the green one behind my back. You got to watch carefully, Stephanie, okay? Two cards. That's all there is. It's two cards. One is a green one. The other one is the yellow seven, okay? Now, which card am I putting behind my back? Did you watch close? Watch close. Which card am I putting behind my back? The green one. The green one? No, you weren't watching. Watch carefully. Which card did I just, am I putting behind my back? Which, which one did I just put back there? The yellow seven. Well, actually, it was the green one. See, you can always fool somebody with card tricks. Now, how'd you like to see how to do it? You would like to see how to do it. I think we're going to have to show you guys how to do it. This trick is very simple. You just simply take any cards you would like, and you get some rubber cement, and you actually glue two faces of the card together. So you have a front and back, both of them, uno. Then, on the other card, you glue the backs together so that it is uh, a face card each time you flip it. That's the simple way you do it. And then there's a little technique here you got to use. You set the green one right like that. Then if you were to just flip it over, they would know that it's not right. So what you do is as you flip it, you simply twist it like that it, with your thumb so it looks like it's on the other side. Then when you flip it back, you twist back to the green one. But when you do it fast, you tell them, I have a green one and a yellow seven. So when you're doing it fast, you got the yellow seven and the green one. Then when you put it behind your back, all you do is simply turn it around so that when you bring it out, they look like they were wrong. And they wonder how they could have missed it. Then you do it again. You say, well, which one am I putting behind my back? Do it again, and they still missed it. No matter what, you can always make them miss it with that simple trick. Pretty easy, huh? For our next trick, we are going to use a dollar bill and another card. Just pick any card. Go ahead and well, let me use a different card. Go ahead and look at that card. Make sure that that's a normal card, no holes in it or anything. It's just a normal card, isn't it? No, it's not glued together. And that's a normal dollar bill, just a normal dollar. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this card. I'm going to fold it in half like this. Okay. And I am going to draw a bullseye. I'm also going to forward, fold this dollar bill in half. It's kind of a beat up dollar bill, but kids love it when you use money for the, for the uh, displays and things. And I'm going to actually draw a bullseye on this eight right here. I am going to try. There we go. I'm going to try, and I'm also going to draw a bullseye right here on George Washington. Oh. I'm going to draw on George. hope that's all right. We've drawn a bullseye. Now I am going to attempt to stick a pencil through George Washington and through the card at the same time. Hit both bullseyes, all right? This will show you the power of prayer. I'm going to fold the card in half. Then I fold George in half, or the dollar bill. And I'm going to fold it back a quarter just so that you can see that the pencil actually goes through the dollar. All right, we set that in there. 
Again, it's just folded up and set in there. Trying to line up the bullseyes is what I'm doing. I got this bullseye here, lining up that bullseye right on top, folding it over, making a crease so that I can shove the pencil through. And I'm going to attempt, Stephanie, to shove this right through. It's right there in between the dollar and, and the card. And I'm going to attempt, using the table to push down here, to shove it through both the dollar and the card. There's no doubt about that. That is in there, isn't it? Okay. Go ahead and even pull that out for me, Stephanie. Jerk that out of there. Ah, there we go. Now, that definitely went through, didn't it? There's no doubt about that. You know, we just probably killed George Washington, didn't we? We went right through his face. But you know, God will answer prayers. Let's pray that God will heal George. God, please heal George Washington. You know what? I think God just healed George Washington to us. I bet we could look at George and there's not a hole in him. That's how God answers prayer. Look at this. We unfold it. And there's George without a hole. But we know the pencil went through, don't we? Another way we know that is because the card has a hole in it. There's a hole in the card right there, but there's no hole in George, is there? Is there any hole there? Do you see a hole? No. No hole there at all, is there? Simple trick to show that the power, the power of prayer, prayer really does work. What you do is you can take any, any card you'd like. <clears throat> we'll use this one. And again, you fold it in half, like so. All you need is a dollar a card and a pencil. Don't even have to put the marks on it. Fold it in half, like so. And I draw the mark on there just so that I can say I'm aiming at something, aiming at that bullseye right there. Then what I do is I fold my dollar in half. But what the people do not know that I have done before uh, to this dollar, let me see this, is I have put a little slit in it. Right here, you can see, try to hold it still here, there is a little slit in the paper so that my pencil can go through. However, when you're normally looking at it, and of course you cover it up with your thumb, you ask them to look at George Washington. So when they look at George Washington, they don't see the slit that's under your thumb. But there's actually, I've taken a, taken a knife and actually cut a slit right there in the paper. So that when I fold it in half and fold this in half, actually what I'm doing while I'm inside this card is I am simply going in that little piece, that little slit right there. Right there, I just actually go in. And that's all I do, and I just cover it up with the rest of the dollar. So really, all it's doing is, show you to you without the card, is going through that slit, and it's not at all going through George Washington. It's not going through the dollar. All it does is go through the card and poke the hole in the card. So, you can make it look like it's going through the dollar, when actually, all you're doing is going through the card. And there you have it. George Washington is not hurt at all. He's just... All right, for this next trick, we have five UNO cards stacked up right here so that you can see them. And we even have them numbered one through five. Now, you cannot see what these cards look like, can you? But I can see what each one of these cards are. And I have a stack of UNO cards right here. And some of the cards in here will match the cards that are back here. Now, I am going to, out of these cards, try to pick out a card that you are going to choose. See, I can tell by telepathy which card you will pick. I know right away which one you're going to pick, even though you haven't picked it yet. And I think that you will pick this card right here. That's the card I believe that you're going to pick. Now, I'm going to set that right there. Don't look at that. We're going to save that and see if I am correct, if that's the card that you picked. I'm not going to touch that card, okay? I want you to make sure that card stays right there. Nobody's going to touch it. Now, Stephanie, I'd like you to pick one of the cards, numbers one through five. What number would you like to pick? One. Number one. This right here is the card that you would like. Is that correct? Now, Stephanie, you could have chosen any of these cards, couldn't you? You could have chosen any of them. 
but you didn't. You chose number one, didn't you? Set number one back down here. Now, Stephanie, I made a prediction of what I thought your card was going to be. Turn that card over and let's see what I thought your card would be. What did I think it was going to be? A two. A, what color? A red two. You th I thought it was going to be a red two. And let's see what color your card was. It was the red two. Out of those cards, I got the red two. See, just like I knew what card you were going to pick, God knows what you're going to choose in life before you even choose it. He knows exactly what's going to happen in your future. And He can tell what's going to happen. And the thing we need to do is trust God for our futures. This trick really is very simple. It's easy to do, and anyone can do it, but it takes a little bit of preparation. All you need is your cards, any normal cards, but you got to get five packs of the card. You see, I needed a whole bunch of red twos because that's the card that I wanted you to pick. And you'll notice each one of these cards has half of a card glued to it. All I have done is glued, cut, cut a card in half, and glued it with rubber cement right on top of half of a red two. So the bottom of these is each the red number two. Now I don't show you that though. I put those in the in the uh, in the stack like this, and you can make. This, I made this out of a piece of wood. You could use anything. This is the bottom of a file folder, and just some electrician's tape around it. You can use anything you want. Make sure you cut the file folder high enough so that uh, the card will be covered uh, all the way up, even over halfway is a little better, just so that you're sure the person's not going to see it. Um, but you stack the cards in like this, and then you already know which card they are going to pick. You have to have that card available, because, and then you just have a stack of cards sitting there, and you pick out that card. You're going to set it down. Then they pick any card they want. I'm going to show you what I see. They pick any card they want. When they pick the card, say you picked this one right here. I would simply pick it up and say, so you picked this card right here, which this is what I see. You don't see this. All you see is that. I say, so you picked this card right here. Then I turn it around and show you that you could have picked any of these cards, which look all look like different cards. But underneath, we know that it's, they're all the red, too, if we want them to be. Then I turn this one over like this so you can't see it. I put it in there upside down. Then I say, okay, now let's check and see which card I predicted you would get. You turn it over, and I predicted you were going to get the red two. And when I turn it around, sure enough, you had gotten the red two, which you would have always gotten the red two if we had turned the card over right. Correct? Correct. So it's a very simple trick that you can use a couple of different things. You can. That's why I had the red two. That's why you had the red two. And you can you just simply rubber cement half of a card on, and uh, make make some kind of holding device, something to hold the cards that'll stand up and you're ready to do some magic. All right, Stephanie, for the next trick, I have in this envelope some coins. I have some coins as well as, dump them out here, as well as a dollar bill. Now, these, I have four different coins here. I have a quarter, I have a penny, I have a nickel, and I have a dime. Four different coins. Now, I would like, I think I'm, I would be able to tell which coin you will pick. Out of these four, I think I know which one you're going to pick. Now, I'd like you to simply pick any coin you want, any one of the four. You take the quarter. Okay. Now, I have written down a prediction of what coin you were going to pick. And I knew that you were going to pick the quarter. Now, you say, how did you know I was going to pick the quarter? Because it costs as much. Because it costs as much? No. You see, you use mental telepathy. And you can tell, and I even wrote on the back of this, I wrote that you would choose the quarter. I knew you would choose the quarter. Now you might say, well, you probably wrote that on the back of there, all of them. No, I didn't. All I have are regular coins. I knew that you were going to choose the quarter. And I even wrote it down for you. You will choose the quarter. All right, Stephanie, would you like to see how to do that trick? Really, it's very simple. You let a person choose one of the four coins and they choose the coin, it really doesn't matter what they choose because you have written down a prediction. If they choose the penny, you have predicted that they would choose the penny. If they choose the dime, you have predicted that they would choose the dime. If they choose the nickel, you have simply predicted you will choose the nickel. 
And if they choose the quarter, it's on the back of the quarter. You will choose the quarter. Very simple trick. All you, to, all you need for the trick is a dollar bill, and you write on it uh, with a little sticky thing. You will choose the penny. On uh, one side, you write, you will select the nickel. On one, you will select the dime. Fold it up and just have it sitting there. And then have your coins out there, and you ask them to select something. And if they select the quarter, you say, now you could have selected the penny, or you could have selected the dime. You could have selected the nickel, but you didn't. You selected the quarter. And I knew, because I had written down right there on the back of the quarter, that you would choose the quarter. And it's as simple as that, a very easy trick, and it will boggle young minds. For this trick, we have a couple things on the table. We have a cup filled with three pennies. We have three pennies there inside a normal cup, right? Normal cup. We're going to put the pennies inside the cup. The cup is going to represent God and all of his riches. God has a lot of riches. This book is going to represent the Christians. Okay? Now, when God gives the Christian some, some money, some riches, he has given one, two, three. He's given us three different riches. Okay? Or uh, the amount of three. He's given us some money. Suppose we were to give that money back to God like he asks us to. It, suppose we were to put that back in God's hands. God will multiply what he had given to us if we give it back to him. God, if you wait, God will send pennies or things, more riches down from heaven. He just, you'll sit there and wait a little while and all of a sudden, he'll drop one in. Then you wait, he drops another one in. Then all of a sudden, he drops one more in. And by that time, you have six. You started off with three, but you gave it to God. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you have six now, whereas you started off with only three because you gave it to God. Now, suppose you give it to God again. You keep giving the things God has given you back to him. You give them to God again, and pretty soon, God will bless you. You wait because you've given it back to God, and all of a sudden, he'll send down something else. And then another one, and then another one. And pretty soon, God has given you some more, simply because you gave it back to him, just like he asks. And now you have nine pennies. You started off with three, now you have one, two, three that you started off with. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six that God has given you. Just because, because you gave the first three back to him, he get, kept giving you more. And if we keep giving our money to God and give our things and our time to God, he promises us that he will give us more back than what we gave him. Pretty good example of how he gives us more, isn't it? Would you like to see how that's done? Okay. Yeah. Stephanie, this trick also requires a little bit of preparation. What we need is we need a cup, we need a book, and we need nine pennies. Now, I use the pencil just to make sure you know that I'm not touching the pennies, and they are really nine separate pennies. And you put the pennies on top of the book. You start off with three. And then you go from there. But here's the secret. This book has been messed with. I fixed this book so that it would have a hole right there. I actually cut some of the pages down a little so that if you open it up, there's a hole in the book right there cut out of some of the pages. Then I also put a hole right here in the back. Had to cut through the binding and actually put a hole in the back so that when you open it up, you will actually see some holes. You see this hole here and this hole here. But when the book is closed and at an angle like that, you can't see them. So all I have to do is, before I do the trick, I put three pennies and just slide them in the hole, just like that. Then I turn it and I put three pennies in this hole. There we go. Now my trick is ready to go. I have these three pennies in here to represent how much God's wealth and what he gives to us. I set them down, and when I count them, I put them towards where I'm going to pour. Put them right over here. So I have one, two, three. Then when I pour them, this is actually what happens. You keep the book level, and you pour pretty quickly, 
and you pour, and those three pennies came out of that hole. Now you have six pennies, not just the three. You have six. Then when you set them up again and count them out, you have them in here, and you catch them from heaven, one, two, three. Then you pour them out, and they will see now there are six pennies, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you notice this time I put them right next to this hole that's back here. I counted them out, and as I counted them, I moved them so that they would be next to this hole so that when I poured them into the cup, if you give them back to God, actually what's happening is those pennies as well as the three that are in here are going in. And then I set it down, and I say, now, since you've given back to God, He has given you lots more. Now you have nine pennies, whereas you only started out with three. And really the secret is, is that you've hid three pennies on each side of the book. That's the whole secret. All right, for this next trick, I have a balloon in my hand, okay? Now, I'm going to pretend like I cut this balloon, okay? Actually, I'm not going to cut it, but I'm going to pretend like I cut this balloon, okay? And I'm just going to pretend like I cut it. Now, a lot of people will come up and they'll say, I saw you cut that balloon, but actually, I'm not really cutting this balloon. I am simply pretending like I cut it. A lot of people will say, but wait, I actually saw some of the pieces fall on the table. I know you had to cut that balloon. I saw the pieces. No, I did not cut the balloon at all. You may think that I cut it, but I didn't. And you can tell because... For this trick, all you need is a couple balloons, the same color, some scissors, and a pencil. All right? What you do is you take one balloon, and you get right in the middle of it, and you push down. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually push the bottom of the balloon up into where you blow into the balloon, up into the top, like that. So you're going to push it down into the balloon, like so. So it's down there. Then you take the pencil out. Now you have a balloon that's all balled up like that. Then you take this balloon and you stretch out the top. And you actually place this balloon down inside of it, like that. That way, it looks like you have one balloon. But really, you're kind of covering this up a little. Really, you have two balloons. One is stuck down inside there. And you can feel right where the end is. So, you can tell people, so you can tell people that you are going to cut the balloon or that this is the Christian's life. You can say, you know, a lot of people think I cut this balloon, but really I'm not. And they'll say, no, he, he really is cutting that. I know that he is. I saw the pieces falling. But really, all you're doing is you're cutting the outside balloon. And then, after you're done cutting down a little ways, and be careful not to cut your other balloon, you blow the balloon up. I just hold it with this hand, act like I'm blowing this balloon up, and you... And then you've got to cover up your evidence, because if you just let the balloon go, they would see this part. So you've got to tell them, you know what? <laughs> Balloons are very fragile. All right, Stephanie, this next trick, we have a simple penny here, and we are going to try to make the penny disappear, all right? I have here a tube. Stick your hand in there. Make sure that's empty. Nothing in it. Yep, it's definitely empty. I am going to try to make this penny disappear, though. But this magic, pennies that disappear can only happen in the dark. And this is a very special tube, oh, although it may just look like a piece of paper that's taped together. Really, it's very special. I have some secret chemicals on here that actually attract pennies to them. So I'm going to set this tube right over this glass right here, normal glass, going to set it over this glass, and I'm going to actually set it on top of the penny. Now, as I pull this tube up, what should happen, if my chemicals are correctly put together, I should be able to pull the penny up and out of the glass. Okay? I'm going to try it. It should, it's already probably floating right about here, the penny is, because of these chemicals drawing it up. And I'm going to try to carefully pull the penny out of the glass. Now, this is the hard part. See, I have to get to the penny through the bottom of the glass. Now, this penny, with these chemicals, it makes it invisible to your eyes. But I can see the penny. I'm going to try to pull it up 
and out of the glass. There we go. Now I have the penny in here. Now you will not be able to see the penny. Can you see the penny? You see the penny in there? No. Stick your hand through there. See if you can feel it. Feel the penny in there anywhere? No. No? But I know that the penny is there. I know that it's there. Now the penny, i got to try to get it back inside this glass. And this is, this is, it's pretty tough to get it through solid glass, so it might take me just a second. But I'm going to put the penny, let it balance there. It's moving. There we go. Let the penny come down slowly. And now i got to pop it into the glass. Ready? There we go. Got it inside the cup. And very gently set it back down. Now, the penny should be resting back on the paper just like it used to be. Let's see if it is. Ready? There it is. Wow, it really did work. And that really is a real penny. Check that out. Can you believe that? You can make a penny actually disappear using these chemicals. Yep, it's real, isn't it? Unbelievable. Now, would you like to know how to do that trick? How you can simply make a penny? Watch this. I'm going to do it fast this time. Vanish. Would you like to see how to make a penny vanish? And then you can make a penny reappear. Would you like to see how to do that? All we're doing is we're making the penny vanish. And then we simply make it reappear, just like that. All there is to it. How'd you like to know how to do that one? Would you? Okay. Here's what we do. All we have is we have a, uh, this is from a file folder, and I've made it in a circle to tape and taped it together to make it uh, be a nice covering. And what I have here is a normal glass, a penny, and a piece of paper. But what you don't know is that I have put some rubber cement on the bottom of this glass, and I have actually glued a piece of paper on the bottom of the glass. I uh, put some rubber cement around it, then set it on the paper, then went and trimmed around it once the rubber cement had dried. Trimmed around to trim it off. Now, whenever I cover this, it looks like the penny is totally gone. But what you don't know is that the penny is there the whole time. We haven't actually uh, made the penny disappear, and it hasn't gone up in this tube and out of the glass, and you can't see it. No, it's, it's there the whole time. So the simple magic is you just got to make sure you put your tube over it so that they don't see that you're covering. Then you can make up any story you want. Tell them you're pulling it up, making it vanish, anything you want. When you put it back, the penny is still there, right where you left it. Just about every church I go to, uh, I'll be sitting around after church on Sunday afternoon or something, and the kids will all gather around to see my dinosaurs. And I'll tell the kids, hey, boys and girls, how would you like to see a paper airplane? I can make an airplane out of paper that will fly completely over your church, over your church steeple, over the whole building, and clear out past the parking lot. And they say, no, you can't do that. I say, oh, yes, I can. Watch this. I will take a piece of paper and fold it in half. That makes a line in the middle. Now I'm going to cut the paper in half. This way you get twice as many airplanes per sheet of paper. Plus, I have discovered after intensive research that a half sheet of paper will actually fly farther than a full sheet of paper. So I can make two airplanes. I will take my half sheet of paper and fold it in half again. Now, <clears throat> this line right here, I'm going to put my thumbnail right on that line and fold this corner down right there. You got it? Then I will fold this other corner down right there. I leave a little gap in the middle. I don't quite fold them tight because when you fold the paper up, it'll wrinkle on each other. So you leave a little gap there. I fold this one down almost up to the line and fold this one down almost up to the line. Then when I fold it in half, I insert the metallic fastening device, commonly known as a staple. I put the staple about an inch and a half down from the point along the bottom edge of the plane. This is the top where it's going to open up to make my wings. So my staple is near the bottom, uh, about an inch and a half back from the front. I'm going to fold this top edge down even with the bottom edge to make my wing. So I fold it over like this, turn it over, 
and fold the other one over the same way. I do it better if I can see what I'm doing. And I try to make the top of my wings line up, make it straight. There is my airplane, shaped like a triangle in all directions. I'm going to get the turbulence eliminator, commonly known as the scissors, and remove the tail of the plane, because that causes turbulence. If it's all cut nice and smooth, now it will fly much farther and faster. I will insert the metallic propulsion enhancement device, commonly known as a paperclip. I open up the middle one. Now, it's very important you don't fold the paperclip out to the side this way. You unroll the middle one so it stays in a straight line, like that. You see that? Nice, neat, straight line. Well, pretty straight. Then I'm going to take the small one and I'm going to open it up and reverse it all the way around backwards. Everything is still flat. It'll lay flat on the table. No kinks in it. Now I'm going to take the large one and open it up halfway, or roughly halfway, and poke it down from the top of the airplane, right down through the crack, just barely behind my staple. I'm going to poke a hole right through the bottom of the plane, pull the paper clip all the way through so it's going right through the middle of the airplane. I will turn this around so this is pointed toward the tail. Now when I pull this forward, this hook right here is going to hook over that staple. And it's caught behind the staple. I'll lay it upside down, put the bend back in here. I will get a piece of adhesive bonding strip. I've heard that on Toy Story. You heard that on Toy Story, okay. Get the adhesive bonding strip and glue the paper clip, tape it to the base of the craft. I need one more slight, uh, small piece of adhesive bonding strip because the tail is kind of falling apart. It's opening up on me. We don't want that. So I'm going to push the wings together and tape it. And we are just about ready to fly. I want to look straight down the plane and make sure everything is straight. No wings are bent. Make sure the paper clip is in there just right. Now all you need is some elastic propulsion devices, commonly known as a rubber band. If you lay the rubber band over the top of the other one part way, I can take the bottom one up here, lift it up, and push it down through this one and pull it, and that's how you tie rubber bands together. Now they're tied together. Now I can tie another one on there. I'll take it up from the bottom and pull it through itself and tie another one. Then we'll put another one on there. You can tie as many together as you want. You can put millions of them together, but I find if you use an odd number, we have four here, but if you use five or seven, it's a little easier because then your uh, airplane hook doesn't hook on top of a knot. But I'll use four here today. I'm going to put one on my thumb and one on my finger, and I'm going to grab the tail of the plane at the bottom and hook it over here, and we are ready to launch it. Well, we hope these uh, videotapes have been a blessing to you. We want you to use the uh, illusions and magic tricks to get kids' attention, to win them to the Lord. The purpose is to teach spiritual truths and to tell boys and girls God loves them and to prepare them for the way the devil's going to try to trick them as they go throughout life. Satan certainly tries to destroy us and wants us to believe that he is the master of the world when God is really the master of the world. So don't let the devil fool you all through this life. Hope you use these illustrations. We'll be adding to this tape from time to time. Feel free to use our materials and uh, draw others to Christ. Thank you so much for joining us.